Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. I just got back from doing some garage sailing this morning and uh, look what I picked up for a mere seven dollars. I know you're thinking that's too much, but this old uh, toy steam engine, probably from the 50s, you know, is strictly uh, junk. It's been totally rusted out because a small boy would have left water in here probably for years and it just rusted the boiler out till the nothing left of the bottom including there. Now this would have been uh, fired with a uh, sterno or other, some other kind of fuel. I think a sterno can would fit in there. But there's not too much left of this and it's been dropped as well and we got a bench shaft or something here but I'm going to attempt to resurrect this and not really quite sure what direction I'm gonna go yet but uh, gotta think about this a bit. On the bottom of uh, this piece is marked Marvin Industries, Chicago, Illinois. And Marvin Industries is all one word. I'm sure this was probably made in the 50s. All steel sheet metal. So what I'll have to do here is uh, grind this down and uh, so it's smooth and then make a new base plate here or incorporate that piece into the boiler or whatever it is I'm going to do. But I have to look around for some tubing of the appropriate size. I just got back from O'Reilly Auto Parts here in Illinois and uh, this exhaust piece uh, which is three inches and it's two and a half inches here, it's called a reducer. But really I was looking for a piece of three inch pipe and my original idea was to uh, take a small piece of this, an inch or whatever I need, and uh, attempt to silver solder it onto this. In other words, tri trim this off back to good metal, which would be someplace right about here, and then silver solder a piece of this on, and then, uh, of course, a base piece too to, to uh, close the bottom, and that would be uh, for uh, where the flame would go. This is $2.69 plus sales tax here in Illinois. You know, we got quite a hefty sales tax because we keep all our governors in jail, and that's expensive. But then it occurred to me when I was at O'Reilly's, well, this, this piece is actually like the boiler itself. So there's another possibility here where I will move all of the uh, working parts from this piece over to here because we already got what I think is kind of a pretty curve here. So that almost looks like a boiler in itself. But the first thing I'm going to do I think is attempt uh, to clean this up and see if this will fit in there or I can make it to fit in and just extend this. If not I'm going to go with a whole new boiler but then I am no longer authentic and to some extent I'd like to keep this authentic although it doesn't really matter because in a way this is just a piece of junk. But I like these toy engines. Now the problem here is first of all this is zinc coated, it's galvanized and I will have to remove all the zinc and I'll probably do that just by heating it up in my foundry furnace and that'll all burn off. But this is quite a bit thicker material. This is 16 gauge which is 62 thousandths where here we only got about 25 or 30 thousandths. Now if I get too much mass into the boiler you would be surprised how much heat it takes to bring it up to a boil and I'm not sure I can do that with a can of Sterno but that remains to be seen. I have started to sand this down just on the big belt sander but it looks like I'll have to take the little four and a half inch grinder and uh, start working away at that. But I've stripped the rest of the boiler down. I've taken the uh, whistle out of there and the, the plug and the shaft along with the wheel and that was pressed on so I was able to pull that off and I already straightened the shaft so there was just a little bend here about where my pinky finger is. And this of course is the bearing. This what looks like a shaft here is a piece of tubing and that's the bearing and it goes clear through the boiler and is soldered in there so it's leak proof. This is the bed plate for the little oscillating engine and if you look at these holes here these 
these two holes here, one, two, go directly into the boiler. Those are tubes. That's where it picks up the steam. Can we see that way down in there? Maybe not. If I shine the flashlight in. There. Okay. And then on the other side here, these two just go all the way through and are the exhaust ports. The little zinc engine itself with a brass rod appears to have about a 3 8 piston in it, 3 8 at the most. And I noticed that some of my other little engines have about a 3 8 piston. So it doesn't take much to run these, you know, it's probably five pounds of steam and a little uh, double acting uh, cylinder like this. And this zinc is in very good shape. Sometimes you see older pieces of zinc that have deteriorated. I almost use the word rot. But this is just fine. And they didn't go to any extra effort here to put another piece here. They just drilled a hole for the uh, crankshaft pin, which didn't leave much shaft left. Some of the other ones I looked at on uh, YouTube or eBay, I don't, I don't know where I saw them, had a, a larger piece like you see on my other engines. Okay, I'm going to continue working on this and I'll get back to you. I have sanded this on the big bell sander down about where I want it. I might take a little more off here and that paint might have to come off. Depends on whether or not I'm going to solder right onto this. Now next thing I'm going to do is cut out all the rust in here with the tin snips I hope and maybe have to use a sander or something but I'll, I'll use my aviation snips, my yellow one which is my favorite and uh, see how that works out. Well I've got the inside of the base all cut out and cleaned out and ground about as good as it needs to be I guess. And it took a heck of a lot longer than what I expected. It's always kind of hard to work with uh, thin and rusty sheet metal. It doesn't machine like good uh, machinable uh, bar stock in a lathe. Alright now I'm going to see if I can trim this, and if not, we'll go to plan B. This is still plan A. I put this thing in the three-jaw chuck on the lathe simply to scribe it. I can't really do any turning on the lathe. It would, uh, uh, it would grab, and, and, and uh, then it would uh, slip and crush this whole thing here. But uh, I've scribed it. I hate like heck to, uh, to uh, lose that nice decal there, but what are you going to do? It's either that or throw the whole thing away, I guess. But that's kind of an awesome decal I think. Here's how I'm cutting the boiler off uh, using my Dremel tool just laying there on the uh, compound and running the lathe ever so slowly in reverse grinding it off with a cutoff wheel. Well that worked far better than what I expected and uh, cut it off cleanly and squarely and it looked like I still have good sound metal at that uh, point. And so now I'll proceed to uh, grind and, and uh, clean this off both inside and out. So in case I, uh, I go to uh, silver solder this, it has to be, of course, down to base metal and incredibly clean. This was a good uh, idea I had, if I dare say so myself. And I think I'll cut off that other uh, uh, muffler adapter this way too, although it's quite a bit thicker. I am now attempting to bore the, this uh, tubing so that the end of the uh, steam engine will fit in there. So I need just a few thousands, but in order to do that, of course, I had to turn a wooden plug so that as I grip this in the three-jaw chuck, it doesn't collapse because the extension here is, is more than what I would like, and I do not have a steady rest, so that's why we got wood chips all over. So my metal working project turns into a woodworking project. So I'm going to attempt to bore this now. And I only need a piece uh, about an uh, inch and a half long. So let's see what happens. We're still on plan A. Well, that turned out to be quite successful. I bored the inside of this uh, adapter. And I got it so it's just a good fit. But of course, you know, they don't make this very accurately. So my boring 
is uh, uh, more on one side of the tubing because it didn't run true but that will be of no consequence and I already marked it there with a magic marker and I because I only need that much of the tubing about an inch and a half and I will now uh, uh, saw that off and get the zinc off of this and we got the bottom of the boiler here's what I've got to this point and I still have enough of this material left for plan B should it be necessary that, that looks like a boiler in itself doesn't it but there's the extension on there so I hope to uh, silver solder that on rather than brazing it all the way around and then for a bottom I'm going to take a piece of a uh, 16 gauge or 18 gauge uh, plate cut a circle this is just cardboard and that in turn will be silver soldered onto the bottom of this and the reason for the extra uh, sticking out around the, the uh, outside is that I need a way to fasten this onto the firebox and uh, possibly a couple little rivets or screws or whatever and I may have to make this just a little bit bigger but I don't want to infringe upon this radius here which I happen to like the appearance of and looking at this after I ground it won't show up on the video but there is a little ring of copper all the way around which in fact I believe is uh, uh, it was silver soldered or brazed together to start with they would not have used soft solder only an insane person would soft solder a boiler even a low pressure boiler so that was uh, silver soldered umpteen years ago now I'm going to take the zinc off of this piece by just heating it up good and hot and I'll do that outside so I don't smell the phosgene gas if I smell too much of that or inhale too much of that I will not finish the video here's the bottom of the boiler that's uh, 18 gauge cold roll steel and that will be soldered on to this silver soldered and then in turn we'll silver solder all the way around here I think I have successfully silver soldered the base on and I'm using 16th inch diameter Harris safety silve 45 silver solder quite expensive by the way and this uh, type of flux putting it on with a little artist brush now I'm going to move up to the hard part now that I've had a chance to practice a little bit I'm going to silver solder right around there I hope and I'm hoping that some of these other joints don't open up when I do that well I just soldered this joint all the way around silver solder that is which is hard soldering and uh, it looks pretty good and the question is how badly will it leak it of course uh, took all the paint off or ruined the paint so I will have to repaint that later on if I can find some heat resistant paint maybe some engine paint or something like that but I am dying to uh, try this out now so I may assemble it and uh, just set this on top of the firebox over there and uh, give it a sample uh, run see how badly it leaks um, this took four or five hours up to this point it was not a quick fix it's time for a test run and I've put in about uh, half a cup of water I used warm water and got it reassembled and oiled I had to make a little gasket for uh, the plug here and put the whistle back in and we're gonna fire it up using some of this uh, sterno I hope that uh, produces enough heat it happens to fit in there just right which makes me think that's uh, the way it was designed but that's just a guess so this is gonna take a few minutes to heat up so I'll be back presently well here it is under live steam for the first time in probably 50 or more years still needs a little more heat I'm not sure that the sterno has the heat that it needs uh, especially since I introduced the extra mass here uh, in more steel and thicker steel than originally and uh, no leaks in my joints 
I got a little bit of leak up here by the whistle and I can't get the whistle to work but there it needs a new gasket so we got a little bit of a leak there it's uh, blowing a little steam out of the bottom of the uh, packing there on the uh, cylinder but nothing we can do about that nor do we care and remember that I do not have this fastened down to the firebox yet and I'm going to have to uh, rivet that several small rivets and then I'm going to paint it and then I'll show it again let me turn it here a little bit pretty awesome and the next time you see it it'll be completed and for all intents and purposes it's completed now there it is at full speed it really books that's the Robert Fulton vertical steam engine also made as an electric I've got about four or five hours in this all together. Well, it's the next day and I've uh, pretty well finished this off. I painted it and it dried overnight, just gloss black. And I put two little screws in here, number 440s by half inch, and to hold the uh, boiler onto the firebox. So I'm going to reassemble it. And it's uh, just about ready to go. Now I know that some of you viewers are going to say, why'd you go to all that work? Why didn't you take a strip of sheet metal, inch and a half wide, and roll it, and uh, uh, solder it here, and solder it on, and, uh, and yes, uh, that could be done. I'm, but I'm a machinist, not a tinner. But that certainly would work if you're good at uh, silver soldering. So we'll put her together now and fire it up for the last time. It's reassembled and I've uh, I'm using the Mamad solid fuel tablets this time just with a, a block of iron in there to raise it up and they look like this like a big sugar block and I was just wondering if they were a little bit hotter than using the sterno and, and uh, possibly a little bit hotter Now when I blow the whistle you're probably not going to hear it and it's, it's very high pitched. With my bad hearing I cannot hear that and I don't think it'll pick up on the microphone of this little camera. And I blew off too much steam so I'll let it uh, rest and then I'm going to uh, do it again with uh, the sterno and see if there's any difference. runs very nice. I suspect there's less than five pounds of pressure in there. It isn't much. Okay, I'm going to switch fuels right now. I am now using one and a half Mamad tablets. Seems to run pretty good, but it might run out of steam here presently. and. Then, too, there's less water in there now as I'm using the water up. And I, I'm not really sure how much is left in there now, which is kind of scary because there is no sight glass. And you can see she's running out of steam just like I am. But uh, several other things I will try off camera is uh, alcohol. I made this up quite a while ago with a, with a rope wick. That works pretty good. And uh, here's another type of... Uh, alcohol lamp but that of course isn't going to fit in there so uh, that's about it for now on this little Robert Fulton engine vertical this video ran a little bit long but I know there's a few steam toy enthusiasts out there that might enjoy this so this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now and keep the steam up